Welcome back to Sprott Money News, SprottMoney.com, monthly precious metals projections podcast. It is April 2022. I am your host, Craig Hempke, and joining us, as usual, is Chris Vermeulen of the TechnicalTraders.com. Chris, good to see you. Yeah, good morning. Good to see you, too. Always fun to do this, man. I, You know, uh, every single month, it seems like things change. Uh, and we've had quite a month, and it's been quite a month at Sprott Money as well. Very busy. Uh, have some great new products and inventory you should be sure to check out. Of course, Sprott Money will also store your physical precious metal for you at a very economical price. They should always be one of your dealers of choice whenever you're in the market. We're going to talk about the precious metals a little bit today. So if you're interested in getting yourself some, go to SprottMoney.com. Of course, you can also give them a call at 888-861-0775 and somebody will be happy to help you out. There's the website right there. Chris has pulled it up for us. Um, Chris, it has been a crazy month. You know, not long after we spoke back in early March, the uh, U.S. and the EU banded together to freeze Russian assets and kick them out of SWIFT. And man, that first week of March, everything was going bananas. Crude oil went to 130. Um, stock market was rallying because all of a sudden, you know, maybe the Fed wasn't going to be tightening as much. Mm -hmm. uh, gold and silver went up with all the other commodities. Uh, and now here it is four weeks later and, and uh, the situation is still fraught, obviously in Europe, but the commodity markets have somehow gotten under control. Anyway, I want to talk to you more though about uh, the bigger picture stuff as we begin here this month. I know you like to look at long-term cycles and how that plays out over time. Uh, what can you share with, with everybody today? Sure. Yeah. Well, let, let's go over kind of the, the big picture. Um, let's go over the sentiment cycles of, of where we are, I think, in, in investor kind of sentiment, their psychology, what they're thinking and feeling. And this is a chart that uh, I created, and it gives you the idea of, of what people are, are feeling as we go through a stock market cycle. And when we look at this phase, the big question right now that I think everybody wants to know is, are we just in this kind of a pullback phase and we're going to see one final huge kind of euphoric push where everyone piles back into stocks, into growth stocks? Or have we already seen the market top out and we're in this complacency stage, just kind of grinding our way higher, maybe poke to nominal new highs, but overall, you know, it's the beginning of the end. We're, after this could be pretty ugly and we enter a bear market. And so that's the big question. And when you look at what's going on behind the scenes, it definitely feels like we are late stages of the stock market, which I'll cover here in just a quick second. But I think the key to take away from this overall stock market cycle is where we are kind of in the risk. This little table, a uh, little graph here on the right-hand side is we are in this kind of red zone, the peak, the maximum financial risk I think you can put investment capital into. Everything is overbought. We've got all, this, all the signs, intermarket analysis, telling us that if you put money right now into this market, there's very little upside, I think, left before the market has a reevaluation event, which, you know, more or less is a bear market, uh, some big correction that's more than, you know, a couple of weeks like in COVID, something that has to, will pull the economy down with it. And so that's kind of what I think we need to see before I think there's the, another real great long-term opportunity in the stock market. So if, if we were to take a look, at where we are in these in these cycles here, there's two cycles. This blue cycle is the stock market. The yellow cycle is the economy. And the way that money moves is typically the stock market moves before the economy. So as the economy is uh, collapsing, we usually see the stock market bottom before that. And we also see the stock market top out before the economy peaks. And if you look at what sectors and what assets are doing really well right now, energy has been on fire. Precious metals are just, just starting to break out. They're just coming to life. We've got utilities at all time highs, which is our late stage uh, uh, asset as well, commodity or stock group. Uh, so all these things are, are telling us that we are in a topping phase. The, the cycle here for the stock market is, is very close to stalling out. And moving lower. And, and that's what's exciting is because precious metals and precious metal miners typically become one of the strongest sectors and have a really big move and actually buck the trend. They'll actually go up while the stock market uh, trades sideways or corrects. And they can do that for several months and the gains can be huge. 
So that brings us into, you know, where we are now in terms of uh, the precious metals market in, in the miners. So that's kind of the big high level view of where we are. Yeah, you're right. And, and it does often play out that way. I wonder, um, not that this time would be any different or anything like that, but it, it, it almost gives the feel the way the stock market bounced back in March. I mean, it was down, what, the S&P was down 15% year to date and then finished the quarter only down about 5%. Yeah. And it has this feel that like, uh, the precious metals are expecting the Fed to tighten this year, but the stock market is looking past that at the recession that's coming because mm -hmm. of the tightening and is starting to trade higher off of the Fed cutting in 2023. There's a very interesting, it seems to be a, like a dichotomy there. Yeah, I, I think, you know, we, we heard about the Fed wanting to raise rates back here in you know December, uh, January, and then they wanted to cut their balance sheet. And I think that's what caused the initial sell-off and, and a lot of kind of continued fear. And I think we've, and now we've, that's been priced in. Now people are, have digested that and they understand it's not the end of the world when rates go up and, and now we're getting this kind of relief bounce. So I think we're kind of immune to it. I think the damage was done to that news. Typically, as you know, you kind of buy into the rumor, sell the news. In this case, buying into the rumor is, you know, the Fed's raising rates, they're cutting their balance sheet, which is bearish. So they all sell. And then once the news actually comes out, you know, price goes up. So yeah. we're definitely in a, a unique time where, I mean, the market always does this. It does the opposite of what the news is when it actually comes out. Uh, it's just the way uh, that kind of typically unfolds. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, I, I've been dying to ask you about the mining shares. Mm -hmm. um, boy, the, like we'll just use the GDX as a proxy. Of course, GDX and ETF of mainly large cap gold mining shares, but there's some silver shares that are mixed in as well and some other juniors. That thing bottomed at 29 for the third time on the day of the FOMC meeting back in late January. Yeah. And it has had a heck of a rally ever since. And now it's pressing up against those highs that you can see on your chart back there from May of last year. And it makes you wonder where we go from here. There's a lot of talk over the weekend, this past weekend, after the really nice surge in the shares last Friday, the first, yep. a lot of talk I saw on Twitter about, oh, the shares look great and all this stuff. There's this big surge of volume in the GDX at the opening tick on Monday, yesterday. <laughs> it's been under pressure ever since. Uh, how does that chart look to you? And uh, maybe can you give some levels uh, to the listeners that they should watch that would you know, maybe signal a breakout toward those highs of last year? Yeah, sure. So uh, let, let's use... Um... So to touch on the big rally that we saw on Friday, we saw a huge money pile in on Friday. You look at like the 10 minute chart, the last 30 or 40 minutes of the day yeah. was just like, man, huge volume, everyone buying into the gold miners. And I think that got a lot of excitement. It actually closed at, at the highest level it's been in several weeks, which looks like it's the start of a, a breakout. And the way that typically works is uh, we'll see the next market uh, when it opens the next session, which happened to be on a Monday this week. Um, You'll see a gap higher because everyone sees that bullish activity. They all put their orders in to buy. The market makers will will equalize that balance, and it, it opens the shares higher. And then, of course, it sells off. But the sell off is is nothing significant. I mean, it did have a big move on the Friday. Giving back some of that is perfectly normal. It's actually healthy. And we've been seeing this flip flopping action between one day we see commodity based stocks, whether it's energy stocks or precious metal stocks, move up. And then and, and uh, growth stocks fall. And then the very next day, it's the opposite. Growth stocks have a big rally and the commodity-based stocks pull back. And so Monday, this first red bar here, we're gapped a little higher and sold off. That was a huge growth stock day. Everybody piled into technology and uh, they were ditching the, the commodity play. So I don't think it's anything to actually be worried about. I think GDX is kind of actually one of the strongest of the indexes of the uh, miners over GDXJ, SILJ. I like GDX the best because it's actually holding up the most. And I think it's got a lot of potential to go to. And, and if we're at this late stage of a stock market cycle, big money managers are going to want to move capital to this sector. And they don't necessarily want to dump their money into juniors. They're low liquidity. They're a lot more volatile they're not out to try and get the most amount of money. They're out to navigate large sums of money and try to grow their capital for their clients. So GDX is, is that play. And I think that's why GDX is actually holding up better 
uh, in terms of price action. And when I do Fibonacci extension, and it doesn't matter if I project the target for GDX, GDXJ or SIL or SILJ, they all have the same projected upside target of roughly 25%. Um, well, that was from last time I checked. We'll see where we are right now. We're roughly about 19% uh, to the upside. They all have the same upside target. So you're uh, to me, you're better to take the stronger chart pattern, which is GDX, where I think big money managers will start to move capital into these larger gold stocks to take advantage of this play. So that's kind of what I think uh, is the safe play here. And I think GDX is has broken to the upside. I think it's, I'm just taking a quick little pause and it's going to continue to go up and the key levels are be, will be 50, uh, 42, 70 as a first level where uh, price can find resistance. If it breaks through there, we're probably going all the way up to 47. Uh, so there's some good upside potential. And, and based on that, that could take two, three, four weeks to unfold. Uh, but overall, it's um, a, a pretty good looking chart pattern. And if you back that out, uh, I think 46, something like that was the high back in the summer of 2020, right? Yeah. Yeah. So typically the way I see that, if I've got a measured move above a major resistance level, I actually usually uh, look to be pulling some money off at that level. I won't go for that full uh, level for the, the whole amount because typically we're going to see selling step back in there. So I'll take the lowest potential target uh, to be conservative. I'd much rather take the gains than um, try and stretch it for a couple more percent, but you right. see a huge reversal and you give back you know, a quick five or 10% uh, yep. for kind of no reason. Yeah. Well, and, and I agree with you. And if the shares look like uh, they still want to run, that's 15% higher, then that would imply the precious metals are probably moving back up as well. Yeah. yeah. Rather than look specifically at silver, because as we know, we talk about that every month and it's been flagging sideways between 22 and 28 now for a better part of a year and a half. How about this idea instead? Can you pull up a chart of copper? Uh, copper, you know, everybody calls it Dr. Copper as an indicator of the global economy and, and uh, the dollar and things like that. But it's also closely tied with silver as an industrial metal. Silver kind of blending gold and copper together, if you want, between monetary and industrial metal. Very interesting chart of copper. Uh, you know, we've seen the base metals last year, things like aluminum and uh, zinc uh, blast higher, uh, iron ore, things like that. And then we all mm. know what happened with nickel about a month ago. Mm. What are your thoughts on copper? Because if copper were to extend uh, and start trading with a five uh, in front of the decimal point, I wonder if that would spill over to silver. So anyway, just if you could, could just do something different, please tell us what you see in copper. Sure. Yeah. So I, I think um, it's got a beautiful rounding formation. You know, we had war hit and we got a, kind of a quick surge and drove the price up. Uh, and, and we're flirting with a breakout here. I mean, this is a very bullish chart pattern. A rounding formation is a very strong pattern. And when it can break through here and, and hold it, uh, a breakthrough on news, I usually negate. Uh, you can't trust a breakthrough on media, news, some type of event, because usually what happens is it just reverses, which is what happened here. So we're still flirting with these highs from 2021, uh, 20, uh, later in 2021. We're very close to having a uh, weekly or, or, or close above here. And if we do, then I think we're off to the races. And a good way to look at this uh, is also to look at the copper miners, because the miners tend to lead the, the physical commodity. And when we take a look at copper miners, they are trading up right near these highs. They haven't fully broken out yet. They poked above it but ended up closing back down. Uh, when, when the copper miners break out as well, that'll be a really strong confirmation that uh, copper is most likely gonna break too. I usually look at the, the miners, the leverage play on the commodity uh, for an indication of what's gonna happen to the physical commodity because physical usually follows uh, sometimes, you know, five, six, seven days later. It's amazing. You can see the, the miners of a commodity break out and run and the physical doesn't actually budge. And then suddenly, you know, few days later, it pops and, and breaks out. So definitely good to watch the miners. And as you can see here, we're right at this resistance zone, just flirting with it. Today's a down day in the stock market. So it's getting pulled down. And the fact that resistance adds a little extra, uh, you know, supply up there. So I think it's got a little bit of work to do, but real close to breaking out. And if copper breaks out, I mean, that's, um, I, I, you know, they say it's good for watching the economy, but 
Um, I feel like the economy is coming to an end. In fact, I was looking at a chart this morning. Take a look at um, XBI, which is are the home builders. I mean, it has been fizzling out of favor. I don't know what it's down uh, here. I mean, it's down over 50% home builders. Uh, they're just not getting, sorry, that's not home builders. Um, it seemed a little. That's a biotech ETF. Looks yeah, like. yeah. Here, here's the home builders. Home builders has been selling off uh, pretty no, big. It's doing better. <laughs> <laughs> it's not doing much better. Yeah. But, but this, this goes to show, uh, uh, you know, mortgage rates in the last ninety days have have increased in value the most in a ninety day window uh, than they have since nineteen eighty seven. So, if mortgage rates are going up and home prices are super expensive to buy because the commodities and, and labor is high, this is not good on on uh, home builders. They obviously aren't going to sell as many homes. It's tougher. It's more, it's not as affordable. Um, so, you know, this is a sign that I think um, people, uh, the economy is coming to an end. This is a kind of an early warning sign. I still think there's a lot of work to be done before we enter a bear market for, for stocks. I still think we could be months away potentially, but overall, I mean, uh, we're, we're definitely seeing a, a weakness in the economy. If housing slows, I would think uh, copper might slow down too, which is where I was going with that. Uh, it'll be interesting if copper puts in a major double top here or if it actually breaks out. We do have this whole wild card of the supply chain issue, you know, right. before war, and now we have war and it's causing, it's wreaking havoc uh, across the board for a lot of commodities. So it's going to hold commodities up in general. And um, yeah, it's, you know, we got this real mixed bag of things going on. But when you look at the big picture cycle analysis, what's going on? You know, definitely doesn't look like a great spot to plunk down a ton of new investment capital. It'd be better to kind of sit on the sides and be very cautious here. And so, as we wrap up that copper idea, if you could just back up to that chart, and uh, I'm just curious myself, if you extend it out on a monthly or quarterly basis, uh, where are we in terms of all-time highs and that sort of thing? Uh, because that would, I would imagine. Well, there you go. Um, any kind of sustained move here into the fives, probably get a pretty quick little burst of price. And I just wonder if that wouldn't spill over. Yeah. I mean, really, when you look at this picture, it's actually a very similar picture of gold. Gold topped out, you know, back over here. Gold has created this little, this kind of bull flag or this kind of, you know, yep. cup and handle pattern. Gold, gold's doing much of the same thing. It is pointing to higher prices. I mean, on a monthly basis, we are breaking out. And it is starting a big run. And if we were to look at that with uh, uh, Fibonacci extension to get an idea where copper might go, I mean, this is a pretty powerful move. Mm. That is going to be a, a pretty lofty price for commodity uh, for copper here. So we're looking at 690 almost to the upside if this was to go explosive and parabolic. And my concern is with what's going on in the world right now, yeah. uh, we could see these crazy commodity prices, not just for uh, copper, but I mean, for everything. I mean, yeah, it's it's right. going to be very expensive to build, to eat, um, transport goods. I mean, everything is just ramping up and it could get pretty painful. A recession, I think, is just around the corner and um, it'll cool things off until, you know, uh, we can catch up with this whole supply chain issue. <laughs> yeah. Well, and after what we've seen in some of those metals, you know, the ones that spiked last year or nickel just this past month, Man, uh, that makes you wonder what could happen. So let's let's then close with gold. I see you pulled it up there. Yeah. Uh, at the end of March, gold had its, I think, second highest monthly close of all time. But March also ended the first quarter and gold posted its highest quarterly close of all time. Long term, you know, chart watchers and generalists usually pay note uh, to that sort of breakout. Mm -hmm. um, I'll just let you take it from there. What do you see and uh, how does it look to you short term and long term? Yeah, I mean, nothing has changed from uh, from what we kind of saw last month, which is, you know, gold pointing to roughly 26, 2700 to the upside, somewhere in this range uh, for this pattern to play out. We've got this cup and handle formation. We are breaking out on a quarterly basis, the highest level, very strong sign. I think uh, gold miners, silver miners are like ready to pop like any day. They're going to like all pop and break out. So we are right at the cusp here of the next leg up in precious metals. I actually feel it's very similar to, uh, if I can rebalance this uh, chart here, I think it's actually very similar to kind of, you know, 
here. Here we had the 2008 crisis. We saw a, a big correction and pause. Here we had the COVID crisis. We had the big correction and pause. And, and then, you know, we see the commodities take off. And, and this yeah. time commodities, uh, I think, have got a lot more behind it because of actual real issues of getting uh, product out of the ground, uh, materials, and also for shipping it and cost-wise. So there's going to be huge huge margins, I think, in, in some of these commodities. It, it depends. Some of these commodities just cost so much now to get out of the ground uh, with what's going on. It's uh, kind of counters it in a way. But um, I mean, the picture is still pointing to very strong, big breakout here. As you can see, it's a quarterly chart. So we're looking at potential a year or two or three years of upside potential in the commodity space, uh, which is going to keep inflation high. It's going to create potentially tougher times uh, uh, cost-wise for individuals, right? All right, leave that chart right there. I want to uh, kind of lay this one on you as begin as we wrap up, Chris. Uh, that period there of 2008 and 9, right? That was after QE number one that Bernanke said was a one-off and was never going to happen again. Right. And as the curtain was pulled back and they were revealed to be lying about that the whole time, and you got QE two and QE three. Look at the, all those green candles in a row. As price went from eight hundred to nineteen hundred, mm -hmm. then we go uh, to all through that period of going sideways, where once again they were lying to us about things going back to normal, the balance sheet, interest rates, and the rest. And as the curtain was pulled back and they were revealed to be lying again in 19 and 20, look at all those green candles from 2000 in 2019 and 2020 from 1100 to 2100. Yep. So I just wonder, you know, as uh, the Fed uh, won't be able to tighten too far without crushing the economy, if they are once again revealed or when they're once again revealed to be lying to us <laughs> and the curtain gets pulled <laughs> back again, uh, we start slinging together some green candles uh, over that length of time. Um, if you, you kind of measured that one out, but uh, what kind of move do you see that playing out to be in the end? Again, that, that, that 26, 2700 you were talking about? Yeah, that, that's, where, that's where this move is playing out. I mean, we could potentially zoom back. And if you want to go from the last major low, I generally try not to go with these huge pictures. I mean, everybody loves yeah. these huge forecasts, but right. I mean, you're really, you're really forecasting <laughs> like way into the future, but you can see the upside potential. Actually, believe it or not, that pullback was so big during here, it actually negated a lot of it. So it is that 20, 26, 2700 um, yeah. based on this pattern. So, I mean, if we get up into those levels, that might be an, you know, might be it for gold for a while after that. We could go into a multi-year uh, pause or consolidation uh, after that. So um, I, I think we're going to see that twenty six, twenty seven hundred dollars. I if all the chart patterns, the momentum, what's going on, are definitely pointing to that. Uh, and we're starting to get the breakout. I mean, if you're not long precious metals right now um, in some type of account, whether it's long term investment, uh, potentially short term, then uh, you're probably going to miss miss out on a big move because this could be one of the the last and the strongest sectors to move before we enter a bear market. And then it could be a year, three of really tough times of you know, no stocks going up, right? Right. And, you know, you look at that, you think with all the trillions of dollars investment capital around the world, and how little it, of it is exposed to the precious metals. And gold does go to tw even just that 26, 2700 and all that cash flows into the producers, the juniors, then all of a sudden the explorers. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Um, look, uh, if you believe that stuff and you think it's a possibility, as I do, you're going to need as much help as you can get. Chris Vermeulen's The Technical Traders is one of Eric Sprott's favorite technical analysis services. Chris, tell everybody what you do there so they can come follow you. Sure. Yeah. Well, at The Technical Traders, I, I do a morning video, kind of like what you and I are doing, but much shorter term. We look at what happened yesterday, overnight trading uh, over the past week and, and how it's going to affect the day's session. Uh, so I cover all kinds of assets, all the way from sectors to indexes, uh, bonds, commodities. Um, we cover all that stuff, and whenever there's a trade setup, we we take some action in those. And we've been playing this recent rally. We've we just put on six trades. We've locked in profits on all six of them. We've closed a couple commodity plays out already. Uh, I mean, we get into these shorter term moves to take advantage of these these rallies and these sell offs in the market. And so I use ETFs purely. And uh, whenever I put a trade on, I share it with uh, members and I walk everybody through it kind of day by day. And 
Uh, it's kind of like a learning experience. You learn technicals if you want to. I mean, you can just wait for a trade alert and that's it. Or you could get in there, watch my morning video every day, learn and uh, chat with members in there. We've got a comment section, everybody comments. So uh, it's a pretty good way to uh, stay informed and, and, and learn, or you can just you know follow along with the trades if you want to be really passive. And as I said, I, I can't even tell you how many times Eric has mentioned to me uh, how much he values your work. So uh, please, everybody check out the technicaltraders.com and be sure to go to sprotmoney.com and thank them for this content. You can be as simple as uh, hitting the like button or the subscribe button on whatever channel or podcast provider you're watching and listening to this, or just go to sprotmoney.com and consider using them for your bullion needs, whether it's storage uh, or new bullion to stack. Uh, obviously, we're, we've been talking here about higher prices in the months to come. Take advantage of that now with some of the great deals at sproutmoney.com through the website or by picking up the phone and calling them at 888-861-0775. Chris, what a month we've had uh, yeah. since the last time we spoke. My gosh, I wonder how things will look by the time we talk again in May. But for now, I guess we'll sign off. Thanks for your time. Sounds great. All right. Take care. Thanks. And from all of us, it's Prop Money News, SproutMoney.com. Thanks for watching. We'll have another video like this next month.